a hell of an opportunity. You got an SEC school on their home floor in order to win this game. Unbelievable energy, unbelievable enthusiasm, unbelievable urgency. Okay, do not be denied from playing another day. Let's go. Bring it. Bradley's won four NIT championships in the past, and now Jim West is leading them towards their fifth. They'll need to go through Starksville first. Second round of the MasterCard NIT comes your way from Starkville, Mississippi. Home to top seed Mississippi State as the Bulldogs welcome in 4C Bradley. Top part of this bracket, the one, two, and four seeds are left with the winner of this game playing second seed Florida State on Tuesday. Hi everyone, I'm Lou Canellis alongside Hubert Davis. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Both these teams felt that they were really close to getting into the NCAA tournament. Each club just falling short in their respective conference tournaments, and now they're playing for a chance to make it all the way to the NIT championship. Yeah, yeah Lou, these are two very talented basketball teams. They just weren't able to get it done late in the season. Both of these teams were probably only one win away from getting into the NCAA tournament. Bradley's a team that averages 75 points a game. Mississippi State, 76 points per game. They actually are mirror images of each other on the court. They like to push it up and fire away. Yeah, you do. When you look at Bradley, they can really shoot the ball from three-point range. You do an excellent job of setting screens, coming off pin-down plays, an excellent passing team uh, looking for their wide-open jump shoes. And you look at Mississippi State defensively, they can really block shots career-high as a team, and block shots allows them to get out and transition. But in a half-court set, they can also knock down that perimeter jump shot in a half-court set. This is Both teams are going to be terrific from an offensive end. For the visitors, this is a tough place to play, yes, on St. Patrick's Day as well. Mississippi State won a score record 14 home games this year. Bradley tries to buck the trend. Bradley and Mississippi State next. Crouch, Franklin, each with over 65 threes made this season. On the other side, Reginald Delk, Jamon Gordon, the only two Bulldogs to start every game. We tip this one off. Controlled by Bradley. Terry Davis, Terry Heater, Earl Walton, the officials. That's Walton in the backcourt. He's the quarterback of the offense. Fourth all time on Bradley's assist list. Got to get it to fly. Cleveland really want to look for Bradley shooting three point jump shot. They're terrific shooting basketball team, but they do an outstanding job of passing the ball and finding open shooters. Shot clock on the floor. Bradley loses it. That's good. They'll do a little of everything. As Hubert said, leads his team in points, rebounds, assists, minutes play. Gordon throws it up at the left hand, and it goes. Well, that was a good defense by Daniel Ruffin. Contested jump shot, but that's why he's a first-team All-SEC performer. Look at that beautiful penetration move by Ruffin. Getting into the middle, easy transition layup after a made basket. Mississippi State cannot do that. So quick at the other end, Daniel Ruffin. Back up top, Delt around the horn. Gordon again, this time for three. When you look at Bradley, they're giving Jamal Gordon what they want. Uh, he's a great player, but one of the things that he doesn't do particularly well is shoot from the outside early in the game, two straight jump shots. 35% from three-point range. Gordon after the three. Ruffin comes back for two. Daniel Ruffin, just about 14 points a contest. Junior out of Peoria. Delp. Yeah, Slater open by Lloyd for a moment. Gordon again hits from three-point range. Yeah, that's his third jump shot, and he's able to get that because Bradley is double-teaming. Charles Rose down low in the post, leaving open a shooter wide open on the perimeter. Against Mississippi Valley State on Tuesday night, Gordon didn't take a shot the first eight minutes. Franklin looking for him, has it rejected, but he draws the foul. 
Well, Lou, at the beginning of the game, they really like to establish their low post threat, Charles Rose, but at the beginning of the game, they've done an outstanding job of finding their go-to player Gordon out on the perimeter. What a job Rich Stansberry's done here. Ninth year as head coach at Mississippi State, 17th season with the program. They were in first place in the SEC West at 8-8. Eight eight. We talked about earlier, probably only one win away of getting into the NCAA tournament in the SEC Conference semifinals. They lost to Arkansas. Arkansas wins. They go to the NCAA tournament. After a terrific victory over Kentucky, Jim Russ on the other side, the former Bradley star back in 1986 when he won the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year Award. Looking for one. Gets it over to Richard Dalt. Dalt's three hits the top of the backboard and it will go the other way. And to follow up on what you said, over the last nine years, Mississippi State is the winningest program in the SEC's Western Division. Last eight seasons, they ranked third in the league in overall wins behind only Florida and Kentucky. Right, he's done an excellent job with his program. And just their non-conference schedule, they really didn't beat anybody. Get losses against Missouri as they get a good defensive play right there. Loss against George Mason and Winthrop, who's in the NCAA tournament, Clemson. So they had a good conference record. But out of conference, they didn't play particularly well. And out of conference, they struggled to open up the season two and five. Rich Stansbury took most of the blame for the schedule he put together for his team. 8-6, Mississippi State in front. Delk walked with it. Richard Delk and Reginald Delk. Richard is number one. Reginald is 24. Born 30 minutes apart. <laughs> and they have two different games. Reginald is more of an offensive threat, three-point shooter, likes to score. And Richard Jones is more of a defender, a guy that likes to pass up shots, really involve people on the offensive end. So two different players. Looking for him, throws it up too hard off the glass. Andrews down with the rebound, and he's fouled. The foul's called on Slater, his first. And, and you can see why Mississippi State is such a good defensive team in terms of blocking shots. Charles Rose only 6'8". He really does an outstanding job of anticipating going up for the block. See him wait. It looked like he had a lot of ball there, but it was a good aggressive play by Zach Andrews. And we're talking about Bradley, a great three-point shooting team. If they can get something from Andrews down low in the paint, maybe at the free throw line, it's going to be a bonus for this Bradley team. He's not a good free throw shooter. 57%. But 64% from the field because most of his buckets around the hoop are uncontested because defenses are so worried about those three-point shooters. Yeah, they leave him wide open. He does a nice job of it's not a guy who can throw the ball down there on the post and get consistent points in the paint, but in transition he can get you some high percentage shots in the lane. Yeah, and he comes up with a turnover. One point game. The winner to play Florida State on Tuesday. Andrews throws it down with one hand. And that's how Andrews gets his points in pick and roll situation. He's very quick, athletic, and if they can get him on the run, he can finish in a lane just like this. Gives him about 11 points a game. Bradley up in front for the first time, 9 8. Rhodes comes down the miss. Lays it up and in. It's a beautiful offensive rebound by Mississippi State. Why at the other end? Boy, they get back in a hurry. Yeah, that's the second time Mississippi State cannot win this game. But they're going to allow Bradley to get layups after made baskets. Defense and transition is going to be huge for the Bulldogs. Rhodes, way beyond this game. Backs in against Andrews, and Andrews takes the spill, but is called for the foul. Bradley leads 11-10. Zach Andrews put him in front with the throwdown. Russell Athletic, ESPN Arena Football. All season long on ESPN2. I'm Gilbert Arenas, and this is my story. For the first 40 games of my career, I sat on the bench. They thought I was a zero. And instead of being bitter, I just practiced, practiced. It wasn't even about basketball anymore. It was about proving them wrong. 
I went number zero because it lets me know that I need to go out there and fight every day. Pairing beer with food works just as well as pairing wine with food. A Sam Adams lager could complement a salmon dish with a little bit of spice to it. The maltiness and the hoppiness of the lager work well with Indian food. With steak, this is a natural combination for me. The cherry wheat with the summer salads. The Boston Arrow balance as well with the fresh. It's all about finding the beer that fits what you eat. If people are really honest with themselves, they think sometimes you'd just rather have a beer. I used to think it didn't matter what deodorant I chose. Dumb. This test shows that Old Spice is the right choice. Take the Old Spice challenge. I did. They said I shot the president. That's a lie. They framed an innocent man. I'm never going to stop chasing him. Now his only chance is to find the men that set him up. I'm bringing this fight to their doorstep. Shooter rated R starts this Friday. I always wanted to be a doctor. But not just to work a certain number of years and then retire. I promised myself that I would get to the point where I would be able to give back and share what I know. And not just have a career, but a real purpose. You once made a promise to yourself about your future. At John Hancock, we have the products you need to help build, protect, and sustain the future you've always wanted. John Hancock, the future is yours. First ever meeting between Bradley and Mississippi State. Braves up one, 11-10. Well, Jabbar Gordon's putting on a show early. Uh, this is an all-SEC first team performance. You see him going one-on-one, -on able to get separation, shoot over the smaller defender and Daniel Ruffin, and then wide open three-point jump shots. They are double-teaming their big-time player down low, Charles Rose, and leaving open wide open shooters on the perimeter. Earlier in the game, it's been Jamon Gordon, 35% three-point shooter, has two three-pointers already in early in the game. Had 18 points on two. Tuesday almost had a triple double. He had nine rebounds and eight assists as well in that game. So let's put it on the floor. White right by Tao! Throws it down! Boy, there's that athleticism you talked about. Crouch finds Sally. Sally gets the two right back. Yeah, Mississippi State is not getting back in transition, especially after a made pass. That's the third uncontested layup after a made basket. But what a beautiful play by Charles Wilkins. Caught the ball at the high post. One dribble and dunk. Tremendous athleticism. Nope, back down low. Shot goes and go. Looks like Ruffin walked with it there. Bell didn't get the call. Dell comes up with the steal. Pushes it all the way up, throws it up, draws the foul from Crouch. For Crouch, that's his first. Team third. Delt to the free throw line. Richard Delt, sophomore of Jackson, Tennessee. We saw that he was able to get that steal on the defensive end. We talked about his brother's been more of a defensive player. He has improved, especially during SEC play, really committing to the defensive end, getting a passing lanes. And with his length, he's going to cause a lot of problems for Bradley, a team that likes to shoot from the outside. About 6'5", 6'6", at the guard position. That's tough to shoot over from the perimeter. Had a season high 22 against Georgia. Look at this Mississippi State team. This is a team that's going to be in contention for SEC play next year. They only lose one senior that plays a significant amount of minutes, and that's Dietrich Slater. So this is a young, inexperienced team that's going to be a force in the SEC next year. By the 13, Sally Brown. Wow, what a block there. Jarvis Bernardo. Gordon. Mississippi State throws it away. Richard Delt tried to get it back up to the top of the key. But Barry Stewart, who lost control. Well, you look at this execution. Beautiful slip by Matt Sally. He looked like an uncontested layup, but Bernardo's coming from, <laughs> from the top of the key to get the block. Both him, Bernardo and Rose, terrific shot blockers. So they have two guys that not only do they block shots, they keep it in play and allow Mississippi State to get out of transition. They love the SEC with over six blocks a game. 
There are 206 blocks this season. That's a score record. Franklin finds room. Shot doesn't go. Gordon thought about the three. Puts it on the floor. Over to Reginald Delk. And Delk knocks down the triple. So that was a beautiful pass by Javon Gordon. Dribble penetration. All the help was going towards him. He found a wide open player on the wing. Ruffin called for the foul. Back the other way for Mississippi State. Bulldogs up three, 16-13. You see Jamal Gordon going one-on-one. -on -one. He already has eight points, two three-pointers. So you see a lot of attention. Three Bradley players on him. Found a wide open Delk on the wing there. Reginald Delk for the wide open three-point shot. And that's what he can do. He can shoot from the perimeter. He has struggled with his three-point shot in the last five games. Just five of 23 from three-point range. Feeling confident after knocking that one down. Hansbrough takes a three and knocks it down. Ben Hansbrough, the younger brother of North Carolina's Tyler Hansbrough. Well, he's straight up energy when he comes into the game on both ends of the floor. Plays just like his older brother, but from the guard position. Daniel Adams' shot comes up short. Stewart saves it. Here comes Hansbrough the other way. <laughs> That was Bradley's first three-point attempt in the game. Stewart at the other end. Mississippi State giving the bomb squad a taste of its own medicine. Yeah, they're doing an excellent job in transition. 22-13, Mississippi State leads Bradley. The Bulldogs firing away from three-point range. Fellas, welcome to our camp. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Just work together with us. Knock it away from you. support. If you could go to a camp with Coach K. Bring it in again. For the same price as one with Coach J. Chase it. Work it. Nasty. Why wouldn't you? Right. It's the same with car insurance. If you could get the personal service of a state farm agent for the same or less than those other guys, why wouldn't you? Nobody can match our combination of service and low rates. Get a quote today. Give me the ball. 22-13, Mississippi State in front of Bradley here in Starkville. Good crowd. Even though the students out on spring break. This place gets loud. Free Coliseum. I like to call it the hump. Mississippi State 14 and 3 at home this year. The 14 victories, a school record. Crouch's three doesn't go. Hansbrough muscles everyone for the miss. Gordon back to the bucket, throws it up. Is out of bounds. We'll stay with Mississippi State. 18 seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, that was good defense by Barry Adams for Bradley on defense of Jamal Gordon. It was going to be interesting to see how Bradley matched up with him because he's such a big guard at 6'4", 225 pounds. You put a bigger defender on him, you can penetrate, go by him. You put a smaller defender on him like Daniel Ruffin, you can go down low on the post and get points to the paint as well. Bradley is shooting around yesterday. Down low, Slater all along. Nice find. And Coach Jim West told you and I, I don't know who I'm going to put him for. <laughs> You put a small guy on him, he posts up. You put a bigger guy, and he'll roll right by him. Rejection there by Bernardo. Bernardo, 62 blocks, now 63 leads this team. Yeah, you can see Jeremy Crouch go into the lane. Uh, one of the things you need to do against a shot blocker, there's a couple things. One, either you need to go into the basket and dunk the basketball. You have to go strong. Secondly, when you go into the lane and you don't have that ability to take the ball to the rim, 
you're going to have to get your body, use his body to be able to create space so he can't get that high lift and be able to get that floater off into the lane. Jeremy Cross took it too far in the lane. He's going to block that at the time. Franklin's floater goes. And that's the floater. That mid-range game right in the middle of the lane. That's the shot that you can shoot over a jump shooter if you don't have that athleticism and that ability to get the ball to the rim. That stop a 12-0 run for Mississippi State. The other run, Stewart throws it up, doesn't go. Loose on the floor. Franklin over to Ruffin. Ruffin pulls the trigger on the three. First triple for Bradley. Yeah, this is one of the best point guards in the Missouri Valley Conference. Played a terrific game against Eric Maynard of BCU. Talk about BCU two days ago. Beat Duke in the NCAA tournament. Winners of the Colonial Athletic Conference. And Maynard was terrific in that Duke victory. Hansborough, he decides to take the three. Andrew saves it. Ruffin on the run. Crouch all along. Comes up short. Twenty-four eighteen. Jim Russ trying to come up with a way to cool off Mississippi State. Hey, hey, look at me. Lock in. Crusher here has an extra deltoid muscle. It means he's got exponentially greater bucky propulsion. Now you lean back and you hang on. I'll be there. I think new rodeo clowns are a lifesaver. Rodeo clown? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm with the birthday party. Hello! <laughs> oh, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. Yes! Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. How do you measure wealth? Sorry, Mr. Costa. I know Mr. Costa is not available right now. He's in a meeting. No time. Does the answer lie solely in how much money you have? Well, maybe wealth can be measured in two ways. Financially, and how we live our lives as human beings. American Century Investments. We've got NCAA tournament action, and check out Sonia Doherty. Southeast Missouri State in the 14th three matchup. Up early on Oklahoma with the All-American Courtney Paris, the center. But so far, she and her Sooners down five. The other game, Iowa State up two on the Washington Huskies. Now back out to the hump, Lou and Hubert. NCAA women's tournament tipping off today. Here on ESPN, NIT second round action. Mississippi State in front by 6, 24-18, coming up at 2 o'clock Eastern here on ESPN. One of these four games, regional coverage, Florida State Old Dominion, Texas Arlington, Texas A&M, Louisiana Lafayette against Marquette, or Belmont and Georgia. And then at 4 o'clock, Ida Post State against Stanford and Boise State battles George Washington. NCAA Women's Championship coming up on ESPN. Here it's 24-18. Jim Bless's crew having a tough time finding open threes so far here in the first half. Well, you look at Mississippi State, well, the reason why they're a good defensive team is because they have tremendous length, even from the guard position. Jamar Gordon, their point guard is 6'4". Uh, ben Hansborough, 6'3", Reginald, Richard Delk, they're 6'6", six, six, with a lot of length, so they're really doing a good job of contesting shots. You see Bradley now in a half-court, three-quarter court press trying to confuse them a little bit, and Delk was left all alone down low. And that's exactly how you want to beat a press. You want to get a layup. They got the ball into the middle and found Delk, wide open, uncontested layup. Andrews back to the bucket, working on Rhodes, puts it on the floor. Finds him, has it rejected by Rhodes. Three-point shot doesn't go for Stewart that time. 
Riley offensively has to find something inside the lane. They're a great jump shooting team. But they're going to have to get to the free throw line. They're going to get some dribble penetration. Find ways to be effective against a team that really doing a nice job here already blocking shots in the first half. Great hustle there by Rhodes. He had control of the ball but slid on the floor. So it's called for the travel. See him playing down low. Look at the hustle there. And this is a two teams that right now want to advance to play Florida State in the next round of the NIT tournament. We talked before, these are two NCAA, NCAA tournament talent type of team. They just didn't, weren't able to get it done late in the season. You can very well see them in the big dance. Warren puts up the shot. Andrews bats it around. Loose on the floor. There are the brackets. Yeah, the winner of this game will play Florida State. Florida State, a team that a lot of people thought might go to the NCAA tournament. Uh, they had big wins earlier in the year versus Duke in Florida. They've got a great player, Al Thornton, one of the best players in the country. Another player that not too many people have heard about. Crouch got his defender up in the air, threw it up, almost went in. But he'll go to the line and shoot too. That's a beautiful play by Jeremy Crouch. Got into the lane, knew that he didn't have the athleticism to get the ball over. Charles Rose already had it blocked one time today. You can see uh, gets a shot blocker. One of the things they do like to do is jump anytime you pump fake. Did a good job of getting contact and being able to get to the free throw line. That's uncharacteristic. He's a great free throw shooter. 86% from the line, best on the team. Gordon comes back, as does Bernardo. And Jeremy Crouch, he's going to have to get it going offensively right now. He's 0 of 3, 0 of 2 from three-point range and knocks down the second free throw. He's a guy shooting 50% from three-point range. That's unheard of. Not too many people in the country. College, NBA, high school can shoot 50% throughout the year. Over his last eight games, shooting even better than 50%. Gordon throws it away. Andrews gets it to rough and rough and shoots the three. <laughs> Missed pulled down by Bernardo. So now Rhodes is on the bench with two fouls. Slater also on the Mississippi State bench with a couple of fouls. Rough and up to Dwight. He throws it up. Bradley again on the run. And Fly draws the foul from Stewart. Yeah, they're doing a better job here later part of the first half of really rebounding the basketball, getting out in transition. See Daniel Ruffin, a terrific passer, leads the team in assists, finds J.J. Twy underneath the basket to get the foul. And J.J. Twy, 6'4", in his last game against Providence in the NIT. And Providence is a big basketball team in the Big East. He had 17 points and 17 rebounds. That's all about desire. It has to be. 6'3", 221. <laughs> but he's a senior. He's a senior, Hubert. You remember when you were a senior, he did not want that to be his last game. So we look at his numbers in that first round game against Providence. Game was played in Peoria. Home court for Bradley. 17 points, 17 rebounds. Yeah, we talked to Coach Les yesterday, and he said that throughout the year, because they played this small lineup, he has to play basically a power forward position. So this is a guy that's outmatched in terms of from a physical standpoint, every game it still puts up the numbers. But he always tells Coach Les, you tell me what to do. You want me to guard the post area? You want me to guard the four, the I five? I like those guys. guys. <laughs> NIT second round action here in Starkville, Mississippi. I'm Luke Canellis, Hubert Davis alongside Mississippi State and Bradley. Home team up seven. You can see Bradley defensively mixing up things. They really weren't playing well in a man-to-man. -man. They did a half-court, three-quarter court press, got burned, gave up an uncontested layup. Now they're in the zone. So let's see if they can find the answer defensively playing a zone against Mississippi State. And the board tried to get it down low, gives it up. One pulls up, free throw line extended. It goes in, he'll go to the line. The freshman. Andrew Warren, out of Indianapolis. It was a beautiful play by Andrew Warren. After a good steal on a defensive end. They picked it up defensively. Bradley stopped in. Nice 10-foot jump shot. It was fouled by Reginald Delkin. You can see Bradley on both ends of the floor starting to settle down a little bit, really get into their game. 
first foul on Dell. Sixth team foul. Hansborough takes a seat. Richard Delt back. Four point game. What this zone defense does is takes away the low post play of Mississippi State. Legend of that shot when you go. Then a couple of cracks and he keeps looking down there. Picks up with it and gets him off the glass. What work there by Bernardo. See the athleticism. He jumped three times before. Took the Bradley defender just just once. Three right back for Warren. He's really done a nice job coming off the bench. That's six points coming off the bench. Dell puts it on the floor. Baseline floater. Why not? 30-25, Mississippi State. We expected a high-scoring game. Bulldogs average 76. The contest, Bradley 75. Sally to the floor. Dell can go. Bernardo, the freshman. He's been terrific on the floor off the bench. Doesn't see much action. Just about 13 and a half minutes a game, but so it's a great shot blocker, terrific rebounder, really pursues the offensive board. Gordon still wouldn't fall that time. Warren thought about it. Got around the travel call. Franklin looking for room. Andrews now. Foul is called on Warren. We'll talk about it after a timeout. Mississippi State leads Bradley 30-25. Jarvis Bernardo off the bench working hard for State. Trying to make sense of all your insurance options can make anyone feel a bit helpless. Fortunately, that's where we come in. For over 125 years, the principal has helped make the tough financial decisions easier. So whether it's life insurance, disability income insurance, or medical coverage, we can make protecting you and yours a lot less stressful. The Principal Financial Group will give you an edge. I've always considered myself a pretty knowledgeable sports fan. That was until recently. They finally got those college football rankings down to a science. <laughs> I was... He was talking sports out of his... Ignorance, really. Boy, that Vince Young turned out to be a bust, huh? <laughs> I didn't know that by watching ESPN News, I could get up to the minute sports news 24 hours a day. So now when I talk sports, I do it right. The other day... My Southside Bank, there is a difference. Southside Bank. The thing about Southside Bank is that they're, they've been around a long time. They're going to be here for a long time. And you want to find someone who's going to give you the quality of service on a consistent basis without deviation. And Southside Bank does that. We're still the one. Southside Bank, there is a difference. Southside Bank. Because an accurate diagnosis is the key to a successful treatment plan, choose the experienced, proven, trusted source for diagnostic tests. Your hospital, Pekin Hospital. Patients and their physicians receive timely, accurate answers, and physicians have access to patient films and records 24-7. Our imaging technology is available at your convenience, even nights and weekends. Ask your doctor to schedule your tests at Pekin Hospital Imaging. Bristol, Connecticut with a quick update from the NCAA Women's Tournament and the Red Hawks of Southeast Missouri stayed on top of the big favorite Oklahoma, the Jenna Plumlee. She got three threes and the Sooners are cutting away at that lead. The All-American Courtney Paris just three points so far, so the Sooners still down four and Iowa State up five on Washington Huskies. Six minutes to go there. Back to Lou and Hubert at the hood. All right, Steve, 16 women's games on ESPN and ESPN2 today and tomorrow. Sharon Fanning, head coach of the Mississippi State Lady Bulldogs, has her team in action tomorrow right here, same place against Tulane. 30-25, the guys in front of Bradley. Mississippi State shooting 50% in the fourth quarter and walks with it. Gordon got off to a great start. 
Had eight of his team's first ten points, but has held, been held silent since. What's happened? Well, he's got into foul trouble, but also look what they're doing defensively. He catches the ball down on the post. He basically has all five guys around him, so somebody is open. They're really trying to make him a pass, and if he does shoot, he's going to shoot it from the outside. They've done a nice job in the second half of really keeping the ball out of his hands. Goes in for Sally. Ruffin with the assist. Daniel Ruffin, 471 career assists, fourth on the all-time list at Bradley. Well, you know, Bradley, a great three-point shooter team. But the reason why they're back in this game is defensively. They switch to a zone. And right now they're in a man-to-man, -man, but they have done an excellent job of getting deflections and really contested shots. Stewart's three long. Wide post on the miss. And they're not a great defensive team. You look at their numbers. One shot doesn't go. Stewart pulls down the miss. Bradley allows opponents to shoot 46% from the floor. Now, if you look at them now, they're getting into passing lanes. This is a small team, but a quick team. Wide right, finds Franklin. Wide right, takes the open three. Gordon comes back to get the rebound. Thirty twenty-seven. Mississippi State in front. And the winner to play Florida State on Tuesday night. You know, Mississippi State, look at Jamon Gordon. He has Daniel Ruffin on him. They've got to clear out the side. They've got too many guys on him. He's a guy that can open up the shot for them on the offensive end. Shot goes for Dell. How big has he been? That's nine points for Reginald Dell. Dwight at the other end got the pass, went up with it, drew the foul from Gordon. 33-27. Coverage of college basketball on ESPN continues Monday night. MasterCard NIT. Second round action. 7 o'clock Eastern. Ole Miss travels to Clemson. Then at 9 Eastern, DePaul goes to Manhattan, Kansas to battle Kansas State. The MasterCard NIT. Second round here on ESPN Monday night. Not only in this game is... Both of these teams are worthy of getting into the NCAA tournament. Look at Clemson, started off the season 17-0. You've done DePaul games, and DePaul is a team that has been up and down. They beat Kansas, they've got a great guard to Sammy Mejia. Many felt that they lost that game against Villanova in the Big East tournament, that that was a play-in game for the NCAA tournament. A lot of people talk about Kansas State maybe getting there. They didn't have a great non-conference schedule, but they were 10-6 in the Big 12, so uh, San Diego State's got a great two-guard in Brandon Heath at Syracuse. I was so surprised they were left out of the NCAA tournament with three top 50, top 25 wins, 10-6 and six record in the Big East, and they were left out. A number of teams left out. That's what's going to happen when you have 106 teams with 20 or more wins. Hands go, lays it up, doesn't go. Ruffin in a hurry. Throws it up with one hand. Comes up short. Hands go back all the way back and grab the rebound. And a jump ball call. What hustle there by Sally. Crowd is not happy with that call. They wanted to reach. You see Daniel Ruffin getting out in transition. Tried the floater. Wasn't able to miss it. But look at the pursuit of the ball. Try to get a jump ball from Ben Hansborough. Looked like he had total possession of it. Tough call against Mississippi State, but good hustle by Matt Sally. Crouch takes the three and hits. That's his first three in this game. 51% from three-point range, Jeremy Crouch. His last eight games, he's shooting 58% from three-point territory. Delt tries to get the three back in and out. Shaq doesn't go to Nardo, pulls down the miss. Mississippi State's got to get something going to the baskets. Either three-point jump shots, they got a pump fake, be able to get into the middle, but the guy that can get them good shots is Jamar Gordon with the ball. Good slip by the Nardo. Nardo breaking the bucket, his shot wouldn't fall. Kawhi lays it up off the glass. Too hard. Second foul on Gordon. And Kawhi is grabbing his left hip. 
So he took a hard fall. He tried to get contact to make sure he was able to get the foul. He was off balance when he went in for the layup and fell right on his hip. We see Twy in transition. Wanted to make sure he got the contact. Fell down. Got the feet tangled up with Jamal Gordon. Fell pretty hard down low on the floor. We've seen Bradley just feast on the fast break. Seven fast break points already in this game. None for Mississippi State. Has that surprised the Bulldogs? Well, they, they haven't been able to get back in transition, which is a surprise to me. They know that this team can really get out in transition. But the reason why they're able to go so quickly is because they play a small lineup. So whoever gets the rebound, they don't have to look for the end of the point guard to bring the ball up. Whoever, James uh, uh, Twy, uh, get the ball, he can bring it up. Everybody on this floor can advance the basketball. Yeah, because of that deep back court, Bradley likes to play that quick, controlled pace, and they don't turn it over often. They don't turn the ball Just over. Just 11 turnovers a game. It's unbelievable. And this is coming from a team that this is the first year that they've tried this type of offensive scheme. I mean, remember last year, they had Patrick O'Brien, a dominant low-post player that left early, went to the NBA draft, and got drafted in the lottery to the Golden State Warriors. So this is a team that is playing a whole different type of style and still put up a 22 in season. And something you and I will talk about later on in the broadcast, Jim West, head coach, actually went to the NBA ranks to learn how to change the style of this team. Three point attempt didn't go for Delph. There's Bernardo, right place, right time. Good pass, fine from Hansborough. Richard Delph lays it up and in. Yeah, but that was set up by Ben Hansborough. He's a terrific three point shooter, but he's also an excellent passer. He had a wide open shot, but found a wide open player down low in the paint. Third assist for Hansborough. Three-point lead. Franklin pulls the trigger inside the line of off. And Andrews on the back of Slater. Slater and Andrews with words. Action getting heated down low. The find from Hansgrove to Delt 35-32 Mississippi State. Okay, I've been working on this plan for three years, and today's the day. Okay. Every Friday, the same Bud Light delivery guy takes the same route past us. Okay. You're the only one who can make the leap. Okay. When I say go, you jump over, grab some Bud Light, and jump back. Okay. Okay, here he comes. Okay. One, two, three, and go. What'd you say? Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Seriously, what'd you say? So where do you think you're going? Uh, Scottsdale. Des Moines? Wait a minute. You're not Wade? You don't know your postage? Sit tight. You are not going anywhere. Uh, we're flat rate boxes. That stuff's already figured out, Pops. Yeah. Oh, so you think that you could sit there and expect the mail lady to waltz in here and whisk you away like... Whoop. Yep. Yeah, that's how it works. Punks. Free package pickup. Now even more convenient with easy-to-use flat rate boxes. Traffic ahead. Incredible. You found a golf course near the conference. Awesome Chinese. Now you find me a way around traffic. I love you. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely and you're never coming around. Take Market Street exit. <laughs> you're right. We'll just keep it professional, you know. Go everywhere, find everything. Fall hard for the new Wear 2 GPS at Avis. No, no, I understand, sir. The problem is I don't have access to your records. Boy, okay. That's a really great question. I, I don't have the answer with me. No, you need to do that in person. It's on a different system. You sure you're a customer? It's not the 6500. Nope. But I ordered the 6500. That's not what this says. What can people do with the right software? Yes, ma'am. I've got all of your records in front of me. I can take care of it from here. For starters, keep the customer happy. I'm Steve Bunin in Bristol. Coming up on the Halftime Report, Dickie V weighs in on why you should watch a couple of teams with a little bit of history in the NCAA tournament. Trey, Doris, and Stacy with the lowdown on the 16 women's games that are tipping off today. And Kobe Bryant did something you got to see last night. Check it out at the half. Steve, Mississippi State doing a defensive job on the Bradley three-point shooter so far. Braves just three of ten from three-point range. 
Second round action, the winner to play Florida State on Tuesday in the quarterfinals. If Mississippi State wins, the game will be played here. If Bradley proves to be victorious, the game will be played in Tallahassee. Bernardo is shot. Yeah, he's not uh, really an offensive player, but he's able to get great position down low in the paint. Look a real comfortable right hand jump hook. They need to stop the more down low in the lane. There he comes up with the rebound. Freshman. Brownsville, Tennessee. Hands go. Wow! Lays it up and in. He's aggressive. You yeah. talk to Coach Stansbury, he just loves the fire that Hansbrough brings every single day to practice, to the games. Yeah, look at him defensively, getting over the, over the pick, trying to contest Daniel Ruffin. Offensively, he's looking at Kobe and trying a beautiful block off the Buffaloes. Bernardo with three blocks. Slater looking for room. Delt shoots the three, comes up short, but there's Bernardo again. Has it knocked away by Ruffin. Hansbrough gets control of it. Hansbrough bodied by Ruffin, foul is on Ruffin. You can see Ben Hansbrough get in transition, going by a good defender, and Daniel Ruffin going in between J.J. Twy and being able to score, and then on the defensive end, how many times does Bradley look like that uncontested layup, but Bernardo comes from nowhere, the other side of the lane, the pin is shot, and allow Mississippi State to get in transition. The freshman, Bernardo, already with 10 rebounds and three blocks. Tremendous athleticism, but yeah, it's interesting, Bernardo and Rhodes, they never play together. Either one guy's in and the other guy's on the bench. Uh, these are two guys that probably need to play together, especially in the SEC when you're going up against guys like Joe Kim Dorn, Al Horford. What a front line that would be to have these two guys uh, at the power forward and center positions. Rhodes on the bench with a couple of fouls. He has spent most of the first half on the bench with those fouls, and Bernardo has been terrific. Out of Haywood High School, played for his father in high school. Haywood High School, the same high school that Tony Delp, the former Kentucky star, also went to. The foul was on Slater, so now Franklin's at the free throw line. 39-32. Top seed, Mississippi State is gone. Well, Bradley has to feel good. They're only down by six points here on the road. And they call this place the hump. This is a tough place to play. They're 14-3 here at home. And to come in and try to get a win from Mississippi State on their home floor is going to be extremely tough. Yeah, 14 victories. Established a new record. The wins in the season. Richard Delt made his move, double team for a moment, found Gordon, he threw it up, no shot, foul on the floor before the shot. NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented by ESPN and Orbitz coming up next, 2 o'clock Eastern Regional Coverage. You'll see the Florida State Old Dominion, Texas Arlington, Texas A&M, Louisiana Lafayette, Marquette, or Belmont in Georgia. Hey, look at Jamal Gordon. This is his first point after the first couple minutes of the game. He came off, hit two big threes, a, a jump shot to start the game, had eight points, and then Bradley, just basically every time he touched the ball, got the ball out of his hands and made guys like Reginald Gelt shoot. Those are his first two points in a long time here in the first half. He now has 10, the only underclassman name to the SEC first team. Mississippi Valley State on Tuesday. Did that against Kentucky in the SEC tournament. Had 26 points there. Had a game time, our game time three to put the game into overtime. Ruffin looking for room. Throws it up. Wow! It goes. Smallest guy in the court. <laughs> Looked for an area. Found it at 5'10 and got it to four. Gordon spin move. Up with the left hand. Uh-uh. Room. Tried to get the ball down low to Sam Singh. 
Yeah, that, that play, to that. yeah, that play's been working for them. They just haven't been able to finish. Sam Sanders thinking about all the block shots in the first, first half. Is thinking about that. Wasn't able to hold on to the basketball. But yeah, a wide open, uncontested layup. Those big guys roll. They've got to dunk the ball and take it to the other side. Great contact to be able to finish. Senior guy who doesn't see much action. He's played in 23 games, but limited time all year long. They're marred by injuries, but he's out there on the floor now for the final minute and a half. Stewart pulls the trigger on the three, and it goes. He was three deep behind the line. You know? Yeah, Barry Stewart's really stretching defenses. They have everybody looking at Lamar Gordon. And the other perimeter shooters have really stepped up here in the first half. That's seven three-quarters for Mississippi State here in the first half. Foul is called on Hansbrough. That's his first. Team's tenth, so rough into the line to shoot two. Daniel Ruffin. Junior is that for Bradley? That's his tenth point. And his half-brother is former Indiana All-American, A.J. Dalton. Yeah, terrific uh, guard out of Indiana. Did you play against Dalton? I uh, played against him uh, sometime in the NBA. A little bit more size than Daniel, but uh, can really shoot the basketball and an outstanding point guard and leader. 44-38. 40 seconds left here in the first half. Second round of the NIT. 70th year of the postseason NIT. This year's field, 32, reduced from 40. Regular season conference champions not invited to the NCAA tournament, received automatic bids here to the NIT, but all those teams that received that automatic <laughs> bid have lost. There were eight teams, 25 teams in the tournament with 20-plus wins, and I brought up the point earlier, 106 teams this year in college basketball with 20 or more victories. What does that say about the game? Well, I mean, you can see that uh, even major conferences like the ACC, SEC, but terrific basketball also in the mid-majors. Missouri Valley Colonial Athletic Conference with 25 teams with 20 wins or more. You can see how tough it was for the NCAA to really narrow it down to the 65 best teams. You look at the NCAA tournament with those upsets in the WAC and the A-10 and the Horizon took away bids from probably teams like Mississippi State and Bradley. So it's three wouldn't go. Bradley loses it out of bounds. Danny Adams lost it. So Mississippi State could play for the final shot in the half. Ruffin almost had the steal. Gordon off the glass. It doesn't go. Adams had it, lost it. On the line. He stays with Mississippi State. Yeah, that was good pursuit by Bernardo. Looked like Bradley Samson had the rebound, but his pursuit of offensive rebound has allowed them to get the turnover, get the ball back, and be able to hold for one shot before the half ends. And throwing down. They had started the game clock before the ball was inbound. I believe 18.7 seconds, yes, we're on the game clock, so they put it back to 18.7. Four thirty-eight. Mississippi State has led throughout most of this first half. The largest lead was 11, and Stewart throws it away. Yeah, that's a turnover. They wanted to get the ball to board and let him get to the top of the key and just clear out. Really did a nice job of creating separation to get the pass, but Barry Stewart led him a little bit too much. And now Bradley has the ball. Be able to maybe cut this lead to four or maybe three for the last possession of the first half. Warren on the floor with Ruffin, Crouch, Franklin, and Andrews. Four three point shooters in the big color down ball. For Daniel Ruffin to go into a pick and roll action, maybe have.
Zach Evans roll it to the basket. Ruffin loses it. Hands go back the other way. They have time. Richard Delt throws it out at the buzzer. That wraps up the first half. Frenetic pace. Jamon Gordon got off to a great start. He had eight points in the first couple of minutes. Finishes up with ten at the break. Our halftime score, Mississippi State 44-38. Now let's get it to Steve Union back at our studio. All right, thanks, guys. Good game at the Huff in Starkville. Coming up at the half, get you loaded up on the women's tournament, which tips off today, and the men. Since barely any of the Cinderella's won in the first round, we got some tasty second-round matchups, including Indiana-UCLA. History, anyone? Find out in the future. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the MasterCard NIT is brought to you by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. And Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? You're watching ESPN's coverage of the MasterCard NIT. Welcome back to Starkville, Mississippi. At the half, Mississippi State leads 44-38. Luke Canellis along with Hubert Davis. Bulldogs actually led by as many as 11 in the first half. Why did they control the play for the most part? Well, they did a terrific job defensively in the first half. I mean, when you look at Bradley, their strength is shooting from the outside. But defensively, they've done a nice job of really contesting shots. Look at them keep keeping Bradley outside of the lane, but because of their length, they're able to contest uh, jump shots. They've held Bradley to 3 of 11 from three-point range here in a pick-and-roll situation. Even Bernardo's their center, steps out and contests Will Franklin. Uh, on the offensive end, they have seven three-pointers, but they're also doing a great job inside the lane. They have four blocks in the first half, so they're not giving Bradley pretty much anything. Bradley has to feel pretty good, only down by six to start the second half. And just so our audience knows, Bradley ranks second nationally in three-point field goal percentage at 42%. They average 10 triples a game, just three in the first half. Rhodes on the floor was saddled with fouls in the first half, off the glass. But there's Slater, he has three fouls, up with the left hand. And take a look at that left hand, Hubert. He has it wrapped up, actually tore tendons in the middle finger on that left hand. Made it look smooth. Yeah, he's a guy that pretty much banged up. He's got a sleeve on his right elbow. He's got bandage on his left hand, but he's a guy that's really tough, energy player. And continues to come to practice and play in games. He's a major part of it. Wow! Richard Delk with the flush. Gordon the feed. And that was coming off a defensive play. Great start here in the second half. And Mississippi State on the defensive end and allowing them to get out in transition on the offensive end. Quick timeout for Bradley. Mississippi State, the first four points here in the second half. Sign up today for ESPN Fantasy Baseball. It's free and it rocks. We knew the 2007 Motor Trend Truck of the Year would be a tough act to follow. So, we took the lead instead. Introducing the most powerful heavy duty on the planet. The all-new Silverado HD. This is our country. Wood finishing projects can feel too big to tackle. But Minwax always makes it easy with rich wood stains and clear protective finishes. It's that simple. Minwax makes and keeps wood beautiful. There's something about the freshness of Ireland that brings out the lasses. Now it comes in a body wash from Irish Spring. Smell like you're worth exploring. New, long-lasting Irish Spring body wash. All the freshness of Ireland. Bottled. I'm looking for my perfect match. I'm in sharing lots of pictures. Quiet times. Must be virus free. Got anything like that? Sure. Take a look at this notebook down here. With over 60,000 Windows Vista trained employees, Best Buy will match you up with a PC you'll love. This gateway is perfect for what you want to do. And Geek Squad can personalize it for you. Now when you buy a new PC, get this great offer from Geek Squad. 
It's time to love your PC. Come find your match at Best Buy. My name is Roberta Smith, and I was born in 1906. My name is Leonard Roth. I've been playing for basically 80 years. My name is Van Schuler. I'm 100 years old, and I'm having a great time. I never thought I would live to be a hunter. I am one of the lucky ones. No matter how old you are, plan for tomorrow, but live for today. Genworth Financial. Insurance for living, solutions for life. They get him cheering for the Bulldogs early on in life here in Starkville, Mississippi. Ten-point lead for the home team. Today's game track brought to you by PlayStation 2. These were the first half stats. What number really sticks out, the three-point shooting? Uh, to, to me, the rebounding, though, because they're down by 12. Bradley is in rebounding. This is a team that the reason why they beat Providence is because they did a terrific job uh, rebounding the basketball. We talked about J.J. Twyatt, 17 points, 17 rebounds already in this game. He only has four points, one rebound for Bradley. Rouch knocks down the three. That's his second in the game. That's the margin, the seven. Bradley now 4-13 from three-point range. Gordon makes his way to the bucket, lays it up and in. He has a dozen. Well, he's so smooth despite his size. So he's a big guard at 6'4", 225 pounds. As you can see at the beginning of the game, Andrews, nice post move down low to the pin of Bradley. He got Rhodes up in the air, but Rhodes with two fouls in this game. Can't really aggressively go for that, that block shot, and when he was out of the game, that's when Bradley made their run a lot of part of the first half. Crouch pulls the trigger on the three again, not that time. Comes up short. Slater the rebound. Down low. Gordon. Finds Slater for three with the wrap on. Hits the back on him. Franklin waits for the screen. Now shovels it down to both Andrews. It's a good pick and roll action. That's how they like to get Andrews down low in the paint. They don't like to throw the ball to him down low in the post and let him work. They like to get him on the moves. And with his athleticism, he can finish like that in a pick and roll situation. That's why Andrews shoots 64 percent. <laughs> Not bad. I bet you wish you had some easy shots like that. Not like that. <laughs> Road shot was blocked by Andrews. We'll stay with Mississippi State. Yeah, Will Franklin gets the double team, but he really freezes uh, the Mississippi State uh, defenders. You have to respect Will Franklin because he can really shoot the three-point shot. You look at Charles Rolls paying a little bit too much of attention, but no weak side help in Mississippi State. And Andrews is able to get an uncontested dunk. At the other end, Andrews fouls Rolls, and for Andrews, that's his third foul. So Andrews takes a seat on the bench. And Sally comes in. Man, Matt Sally, from a defensive standpoint, is probably going to be a little bit better. Did a nice job against Herbert Hill of Providence. So doesn't have a lot of size, but does a nice job of getting position and doing a nice job rebounding the basketball with a good post defense. He's an all SEC performer. Mississippi Valley State to the second game. Frank down the bottom of the defense had a block for by Dell. Gordon. Slater base. Wow. Throws it up. It didn't go. Knocked around. Tracked down by Richard Dell. Gordon takes the three. Oh, it really likes the beginning of halves. Had eight points at the beginning of the first half. Jamon Gordon comes out with five quick points early here in the second half. 15 points for Gordon. You can see getting out at three-point range. That's his third three of the game. He's 35% from three-point range. And did a nice job of freezing his defender and knocking down that open jump shot. Gordon finds Slater all along. And that's why he's first to all SEC that was set up by Gordon. You see that pass and transition. Did you see him examine the court? Unbelievable. He's scoring, he's rebounding, he's distributing the basketball. He is their player. Woo! 
There's Jamal Gordon coming down. Look at he's looking both ways, looking for an open player. What a beautiful pass in transition to Dietrich Slater. Just on the previous possession, he hit a big three. He's really come out here in the second half and just taking charge. And when you put the ball into his hands, he's he gets something done. Yeah, he does so much. Yeah, the second triple double in score history against Vanderbilt. 15 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists. Coverage of college basketball on ESPN continues Monday night. More MasterCard NIT, second round action, 7 o'clock Eastern. Ole Miss travels to Clemson, then at 9 Eastern, DePaul and Kansas State. The MasterCard NIT, second round on ESPN Monday night. Jamont Gordon. He played on the same high school team at Oak Hill. Listen to these names. <laughs> You'll appreciate this. North Carolina's Ty Lawson, Kevin Durant from Texas, Eric Devendorf from Syracuse, and Gordon are all on the same high school That's team. That's not fair. That's not fair. Are you That's kidding not me? Fair. <laughs> That's like your Carolina That's teams. not fair. That's better. <laughs> Position felt playing against you guys. Wow. Knocked out of bounds. We'll stay with Mississippi State. Luke Stansberry. Seventh postseason appearance, which doubles the school's all time postseason tournament appearances in just nine years of coaching. He's been all over the floor here in the early moments of the second half. Gordon tried to fool himself and his call to the offensive foul. Yeah, that's a tough call against Gordon. I thought he did a good job of lowering his shoulder but not pushing off to try to create separation. 57 by Daniel Ruffin. You got it. Buy you a Chevrolet. Go buy you a Chevrolet. If you give me some of your love. Nobody can shut that Chevy down. Cause that brand new Chevy is mine. I like my reach down. Look, hey, am I top? Can you see me ride 24 in my Impala with that? No, we're not the jet set. We're the old Chevrolet set. But ain't we got love? No, we're not the jet set. We're the old Chevrolet set. What is victory? Is it when you've won more titles than anyone else? Or is the greatest achievement of all building a foundation for yourself so you can become one for someone else? Go, go, go. Keep battling. Keep battling. You got it. Go, go! Right here, bicycle. American Century Investments. You said I shot the president. They framed an innocent man. You never do stop chasing me. Now his only chance is to find the men that set him up. I'm bringing this fight to their doorstep. Shooter, rated R, starts this Friday. These are only some of the rewards of Hyatt Gold Passport. These are the great new places to earn them. Join now at goldpassport.com. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Steve Bunin in the Bristol studios. Let's tell you what's happening in the big dance women style. Oklahoma, Southeast Missouri State. The Red Hawks smelling an upset, but it's the freshman Jenna Plumley. Five points a game. She's got 14. Courtney Paris just five, working on 58 straight double doubles. But the All America, they don't need her. They're up eight. Iowa State blowing out Washington halfway through the second half. Guys, thank you. All right, Steve, one through three seeds in the first round of the women's tournament. Locks, 133 of 134 teams have won that first round game. Back here, Crouch knocks down. Fifty-seven, forty-seven. 47 Down low, Rose looking for one off the glass. 
good high low pass by Slater getting it down to their big guy Charles Rose but it's interesting Mark Gordon has three fouls would you keep him on the floor? I would keep him on the floor but you know you are up by 12 it's a great opportunity to take him out of the game for a good two three minute stretch but remember Bradley made the run in the latter part of the first half and Rhodes and Gordon were on the bench Three points, three goals. Nine point lead for Mississippi State. Gordon almost lost it though. You see the Bradley's ability to shoot so well from three point range. They could get back into the game extremely easily. And outside of Gordon, he really handles the ball well. They really don't have another guy who's a primary ball handler for Mississippi State. So that's why Coach Stansbury is keeping him in despite having three fouls. Rhodes bodied by Sally Dino. Third foul on Sally. Yeah, he's still talking about that offensive foul about a couple of possessions ago. Thought he did a nice job of creating separation, but Daniel Ruffin really sold it, flopped, went back, and was able to get the a crucial third foul on Gordon. Who here in the second half has been huge in terms of distributing the basketball, knocking down three-point shots, and just being Mr. Everything for the Bulldogs. He does so much. I mentioned before, he had a triple-double earlier this season against Vanderbilt, just the second triple-double in Mississippi State history. The only Division I player averaging 16 points, seven rebounds, five assists a game. Most people out of the SEC don't know about it. No one stopped him. He just does a nice job because of his size. He can create separation, get into the middle, and be able to absorb the hit and still have the athleticism to get the ball in. It's a wonderful player. People are going to start to know about him. He's going to be one of the preseason All-Americans next year. Wise shot comes up short. Andrews throws it off the roads. And it's still with Bradley. Heads up play there by Andrews. Oh, it looked like it was close. Putting his foot out on the line. A good play by Andrews to knock it off the roads. And that's great balance for a guy. 6'8", pretty good, pretty good the balance. balance. Some minor good plyometrics, good core. <laughs> It's a heck of a football player in high school. Sixty-one fifty, Mississippi State in front. We're at Humphrey Coliseum. NIT second round action. Start for Mississippi. I'm Lou Canellis, Hubert Davis alongside. Mississippi State, the number one seed. Bradley the four seed. The winner to play Florida State, the two seed, on Tuesday. If Mississippi State wins, they'll play that quarterfinal matchup here, same place, Tuesday night. If Bradley proves to be victorious, they'll play the game in Tallahassee. Into the game, Adams. Dwight takes a seat. Eighteen point lead. The Mississippi State. Controlled the play throughout. Adams left alone for three and he made him pay. Yeah, that was good penetration by Daniel Ruffin. Got into the middle. The defense collapsed towards him and found Adams in a wide open three point shot. And now it's only a 10 point game. They can get back into the game so quickly because of their ability to shoot the three point shot. And he tried to get three back. You saw the pass coming from Ruffin. MasterCard NIT. 
There are the brackets. They get the winner to play Florida State on Tuesday. West Virginia and North Carolina State have already reached the quarterfinals. Yeah, that's a strong quarterfinals. You look at West Virginia. They had a tough loss in the Big East tournament versus Louisville. They had a chance to stop Edgar Sosa in that transition. They win that game. I think they have a chance to get into the NCAA tournament. And NC State almost did it the hard way by winning four games in the ACC tournament. with a short jumper. Well on the floor, he's played big in this game. Had two quick fouls in the first half, saw limited action, but Bernardo off the bench was terrific. Had 11 rebounds in the first 20 minutes. Adams saved it. Knocked around. Mississippi State with it. Richard Delft looking for him. Gordon is fouled. He'll go to the line. He draws the foul from Andrews. And for Andrews, that's his fourth foul. Yeah, that brings in Sally off the bench. And 14 foul. First to timeout. 65-53. Mississippi State vying for its sixth 20-win season. Their head coach, Rick Stansberg. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented by Orbitz. Coming up next, 2 o'clock Eastern regional coverage here on ESPN. Florida State Old Dominion, Texas Arlington against Texas A&M. Louisiana State Lafayette against Marquette. For Belmont and Georgia, most of you will see the Florida State Old Dominion contest. And then at 4 o'clock Eastern, Boise State will battle George Washington. And Idaho State will take on Stanford. Can you hear that number I threw out when Steve from our studios gave it back to us? The one through three seeds in the first round of the women's tournament of the women's tournament are locked. 133 of 134 teams over the years have won their first round games. Does that include North Carolina? <laughs> <laughs> Ivory Latta? <laughs> I'm sure. Elena <laughs> Larkin? <laughs> Keep going. ACC champions? <laughs> Gordon misses the first. What about the guys? They've got Michigan State today. They've got Michigan State today, a uh, Michigan State team that has probably one of the most approved players in the country, a G. Knighter. Oh, he's been huge this year. Uh, just big time games against good teams like Ohio State, Wisconsin. Uh, but you look at North Carolina, this is uh, the, probably the deepest team in the country, two or three deep at every position. So Ben Hansbrough's brother, Tyler, feels a little bit more comfortable wearing that mask after breaking it at the latter part of the season against Duke. I look for North Carolina to advance in that game. How come I knew that was coming? <laughs> Did I think you would tell me anything else? 66-53, <laughs> Mississippi State in front. I'll be honest with you. Head to the side, seat back low. When you see me riding away, I'm in my Chevy ride slow. I'm in my Chevy ride slow. Nice ride, homie. I'll trade you. <laughs> Chevy Impala SS, an American revolution. I was picking up our son. Hi, I'm Lee Ransom. Did you know that you're just one phone call away from a dry basement? Call Basement Dewatering Systems at 674-4000 for a free home inspection and estimate. That's what I did 15 years ago when Basement Dewatering Systems turned my wet basement into a dry, clean, usable living space. And my basement is still bone dry. They can do the same for your home, too. Call Basement Dewatering Systems at 674-4000. An affordable, effective, permanent solution. Basement Dewatering Systems. A name you can trust. 
support and customer service. Only ADT has a network of interconnected monitoring centers helping provide protection from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. And only ADT covers you with a theft protection guarantee. You may even save up to 20% on your homeowner's insurance. Call now and save up to $200 on an ADT protection package. ADT works. Just ask the bad guys. ADT. Always there. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the MasterCard NIT is brought to you by MasterCard. There's some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And in part by Hooters. Catch all the basketball action at Hooters and try our new seafood selections. Welcome back to Starkville, Mississippi. And the Mississippi State Bulldogs were in front by 13, 66-53. They've held the Bradley Braves three-point shooters to 30% shooting as we look at Jamont Gordon on the bench with a game-high 18 points. What have they done defensively against Bradley's three-point shooters? Well, well, they have tremendous length at the guard position. You can see Rhodes can test that shot. They have five blocks in the game, but they've changed at least five other shots so they're not giving them points in the paint and they're also really extending out on the perimeter because of their length it's going to be tough for them to shoot wide open jump shot Slater looks for someone finds Hansbro Hansbro makes his move wow. okay okay <laughs> 68-53, 15-point advantage, the largest. But this is a key stretch for Mississippi State. Can Bradley make a run without DeMont Gordon at the floor? Hands go for three this time. Rhodes there for the offensive rebound. Back up with it now, but draws the foul from Sally. Fourth foul on Sally. So now Jim Less in trouble on the Bradley side. Sally on the floor with four fouls. He has Andrews. Also with four fouls, Andrew is getting ready to come back. Well, this is a team that doesn't have a lot of depth. They're, as you talked before, they're 6 of 20 for three-point range. They just gave up. That's their 13th offensive rebound. So they're not doing a good job of boxing out. And we give Mississippi State a chance to get second chance points, especially on the road. That's not good formula to win the game. They were the Missouri Valley Conference's worst rebounding team, so we really shouldn't be surprised with the problems they're having on the rebounding end. What has surprised me is Coach Stansbury practiced for two and a half hours yesterday, Rhodes at the line with 10 points and four rebounds. Defense, and he told his guys, you need to fill the gaps because they like to drive and then find the open shooters on the perimeter. And I think Mississippi State's done a terrific job of doing that. Well, it's worked. I mean, they have really extended their defense. How many times has Bradley had an uncontested three-point shot? They always have a hand in their face. They're getting into passing lanes. But then when they're getting into the lane, look at the contest. They're able to get the offensive rebound. But every time a shooter goes in there for a jump shot, Charles Rhodes is sitting right there on them. Every shot is contested, and it doesn't matter how good a shooting team you are. Contested shots, those are tough shots to make. And Coach stands very lucky to have a couple of great shot blockers. Hands go to the bucket, comes up short. Rhodes, sixth all time here at Mississippi State in block shots. Three pointer wouldn't go, knocked around. Warren back up with it, the short jumper falls. And Bernardo, who played great minutes off the bench in the first half for Mississippi State, he had three blocks in the first 20 minutes. Back to the 12-point game. Slater's shot with go. Not what you want your big man doing. No, you can't do that in that situation. And that's why you want to get the ball to your point guard. He does have the ability to advance the ball, but as soon as he crossed half court, he needed to give it to a guard because he can't make that play out in transition. Jim Russ, one of the best guards to ever play in the Missouri Valley Conference. That was a crucial possession for Bradley. You can see Mississippi State, they're not the same offensively without Jamal Gordon. They don't know where they want to go offensively in terms of dribble penetration. They don't have another primary ball handler that comes off the bench and is able to make the plays like Jamal Gordon can. Gordon on the bench with three fouls. Stewart finds an opening, comes up short. 
Franklin finds Cross alone on the left wing. You can't leave him by himself. Uh-uh. 51% three-point shooter. Makes it a nine-point game. Yeah, he's a one guy. Look who's coming off the bench right now. Jamal Gord. This is a crucial time. Even with three fouls, they have to get him back on the floor. I think they only scored on one possession since Gordon has gone to the bench. So, offensively, they're not in sync without their go-to player on the floor. And that's the one negative from having a guy who does so much on the floor. You pull him out, and everyone much looks at each other. Exactly. Warren steps back into three-point territory. Andrews working hard down low against Bernardo. And he drew the foul. It's interesting. Gordon goes out. They struggle offensively. They're now giving offensive rebounds. And now Jamal Gordon's coming in. They haven't been able to get anything offensively. So you can see how much this guy means to a team on both ends of the floor. Fourth foul on Slater. That takes the seat. One. Andrews. No one picked him up. Slater was standing there. Yeah, Slater has four fouls. How much can he do against a guy like Andrews? Yeah. It's down to seven points. Yeah, good ball movement. And this is why Jamal Court's back into the game because Bradley's going to continue to play. They can get back into the game with their ability to shoot the basketball. Bradley with one timeout left. Well, he's on a 9-0 run. Yeah, you see Jeremy Crouch. They have to respect his three-point shot. He just knocked down a three-point shot. So two guys go to him. They leave Andrews wide open underneath the paint. That's what he can do. He can finish into the lane. Only down by seven with eight minutes to go on the road. Bradley has to feel good about that despite shooting seven of 21 at three-point lane. Other side of the MasterCard NIT bracket. Therefore, it's George Miller plays with the Paul Kansas State winner. Those two games on Monday, also Monday night at 7 o'clock Eastern in the ESPN family. Clemson Ole Miss, San Diego State, and Syracuse. Yeah, Air Force, they really struggled towards the end of the season, losing four straight games. Uh, this looked like a lock in the NCAA tournament midway through the season. We talked about Clemson going 17-0, and Kansas State versus DePaul, two very talented basketball teams. Just weren't able to get it done with a lot of part of the season, so... From top to bottom in the NIT, very competitive tournament. You see Sam Newton and his crew. You can they've done a terrific job with this year's field. Stewart knocks down the three. That stops the blue. Yeah, but who gave him the assist? <laughs> Jamal has <laughs> so much attention. <laughs> he comes into the game. Now they can hit shots. Look at him get it up defensively. Later, all alone, and hits from three-point range with the wrap on the left hand. From who? Tamako, another assist. It's amazing what kind of energy he brings to the floor. Jamon Ford, the sophomore, played at Oak Hill Academy. And you look at Coach Stansbury, he just pointed to him and said, good job. He's the captain he understood why they were able to get those last two shots. Here he comes in transition again. Look at him. He makes the right play every time. He found Dietrich Slater out on the perimeter on the previous possession. He found another wide open teammate. I think it was Barry Stewart in the corner. He just understands what play to make. He doesn't turn the ball over, and he makes the right play at the right time, and he's under control. He didn't force the action. Push it up in transition, allowed his teammates to fill the lanes, and he scored six quick points, and it's because of him. More MasterCard NIT action Monday night here on ESPN. More two second round games. 7 o'clock Eastern, Ole Miss is at Clemson. Then at 9 o'clock Eastern, the ball on the road at Manhattan, Kansas against Kansas State. The MasterCard NIT second round here on ESPN Monday night. The winner of this game will play Florida State in the quarterfinal round. West Virginia, North Carolina State, and they've already reached the quarterfinals. Jamont Gordon. There's the student section here.
at the hump going nuts. <laughs> 13 point lead for Mississippi State. And there's the sophomore. Stick, took over as the starting point guard last season. And really, his bugaboo a year ago was turnovers. Five turnovers. But this guy used to be a power forward in high school. And then you throw him into the point guard position. He had to learn that position all year last season. That's been five good ways to much better this season at the spot. For doubt. If I was Coach Stansbury, that's, that's the only play I would have in the playbook. Get the ball to Gordon. Just let him make a play. <laughs> Franklin shot at the side of the backboard. And he's feeling it. You can just see the confidence right now in his eyes. This time he finds Rhodes breaking into the bucket. Up and in. He has picked up an assist in the last four buckets for Mississippi State. Four straight possessions. He was the one that told Charles Rhodes to roll to the basket. Beautiful play by Javon Ford. 18 point lead. Andrews at the other end. Gets two back. So Bradley, they have to get the ball out of his hands. So Jamal Gordon has the ball in his hands. He makes he makes great decisions. They've got to trap. They've got to make somebody else make plays because if they're going to allow him to do it. He's going to burn them on the offensive end almost every time. Gordon with seven assists in the game. Delk was fouled. So shoot free throws after a break. It's been the Jamon Gordon Show here in Starkville. Hot soup, four dollars. Cold medicine, eleven dollars. Blanket, twenty-four dollars. Making it all better, priceless. With PayPass on your Mastercard, just tap and go. It's time to play basketball, eh? Hey? Great food, cold beer. Totally awesome atmosphere. Hooters and basketball, it's a natural. Firecracker shrimp, ice cold beer. Great new seafood. Get it all here. Aw, oh, Dick. We thought you had game. What do you have to say for yourself? Hooters is awesome, baby, and I'm a prime time player. I love it so much, I think I'll stay here. Nice save. Hey, hey, look at me. Lock in. Crusher here has an extra deltoid muscle. It means he's got exponentially greater bucking propulsion. Now you lean back. And you hang on. I'll be there. I think new rodeo clowns are a lifesaver. Rodeo clown? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm with the birthday party. Hello! Hello! <laughs> oh, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. I'm Gilbert Arenas, and this is my story. For the first 40 games of my career, I sat on the bench. They thought I was a zero. And instead of being bitter, I just practiced, practiced. It wasn't even about basketball anymore. It was about proving them wrong. I went number zero because it lets me know that I need to go out there and fight every day. Steve Bunin inside the Bristol Studios. Get you updated on the women's NCAA tournament, which tipped off today. 16 games. Oklahoma had a lot of trouble early, but looks like they'll move on against Southeast Missouri State. And Iowa State has been in control against the Washington Huskies throughout. Just two minutes left in that one as well. T.J. Jordan, the leading scorer for Old Dominion. They're taking on Florida State coming up on ESPN. Lady Monarchs have lost four straight first-round games since reaching the Elite Eight in 2002. Here at Mississippi State, leads Bradley by 16, 80, 64. Reginald Delk at the line, misses the first of two. 
missed it because the referee passed on the ball. It wasn't Jamar Gordon. <laughs> That's a good ball. point. <laughs> Let him throw him the ball at the free throw line. I promise he'll score. <laughs> Prior to that point, Gordon had picked up an assist. Last four buckets for Mississippi State. 17 point lead for the Bulldogs. They are tough as nails here on their home court. Working on a five game home winning streak. Why? Turns it over. Bradley, uncharacteristically slow. Oh! With the ball on his third, he throws it down with one hand. The other way, here comes Stewart. Lays it up. Doesn't go, but he'll go to the line. You're just dying to see that highlight. Oh my! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Look at the pick and roll situation. Crossing over JJ Twy. Beautiful finish to the ladies. The poster slam. Can dunk, post up, shoot threes, distribute the basketball, rebound, defend. Lou, I'm hoping that the fans here in Starkville get to see him two more years. 83-64, Jamont Gordon. Zach Andrews has fouled out for Bradley. But that is the reason why he didn't come over and contest that dunk by Jamal Gordon. But even if he had zero fouls, I'm not sure if I would have stepped over on that play. And he's so big, he has such great size, 6'4", 225. You look at his calves, I told you yesterday, after watching Gordon on Tuesday night against Mississippi Valley State, and then yesterday at practice, he should be playing linebacker on the football team. Yeah, he, he can go both ways. Uh, just tremendous strength and quickness to be able to play on both ends of the floor. As we talked about earlier, from a defensive standpoint, if you put a smaller guy on him, he'll post up overpower you. They put Daniel Ruffin on him. Even though Ruffin is a good defender, no match for him because he's too small. You put a bigger defender on him, he goes by J.J. Fry and ducks on him. So, so this is a mismatch, not only in this game, but any team he plays in the SEC, they cannot match up with Jamal Gordon. Well, you've seen Florida State. Is there anyone on Florida State that can defend Jamal Gordon? No, not at all, but there's nobody that can defend Al Gordon. <laughs> so they've got two go-to players. Whichever one has more impact is going to win this game but Mississippi State wins. They play at home. You have to give them the edge. We talked about earlier, they're 14-3 here at home, and they're going to have their students back. Spring break is over. They have a terrific crowd here. On Tuesday night, this place is going to be loaded. Now, this place makes some noise. Humphrey Coliseum. Shot doesn't go. Another rebound for Gordon. He's coming close to a triple-double. He had one earlier this year against Vanderbilt. Only the second in school history. And Mississippi State, by the way, with that rebound. My Gordon ties the season high with 46 rebounds in a game. Rhodes just backing in against Sally. Throws up the right-handed hook. Sally, nothing he could do. He's got four fouls, and Andrews has already fouled out. He has four fouls and three inches shorter than and rolls down low the post. Here comes Gordon. The alley up the down. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Starkville. Warren. Blocked there by Rhodes. Well, they're playing at both ends of the court. Yeah, they are. I mean, Rhodes pointing the finger like Dikembe Mutombo. <laughs> I don't know if he can block shots like him, but he's definitely looked like him today against Bradley. Gordon again, the alley -oop. This time, Rhodes the beneficiary. <laughs> for three. Slater 
saved it and stepped on the line. Mississippi State. There's Rhodes for the finish. Traffic ahead. Incredible. You found a golf course near the conference. Awesome Chinese. Now you find me a way around traffic. I love you. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely and you're never coming around. Take Market Street exit. <laughs> you're right. We'll just keep it professional, you know? Go everywhere, find everything. Fall hard for the new Wear 2 GPS at Avis. I've always wanted a farm, like my grandparents used to have, with a stable, you know, for the horses, a place where everyone can get together. Kids, grandkids, all my cousins, the whole family, and then pass it on to all the generations that come after me. You once made a promise to yourself about your future. At John Hancock, we have the products you need to help build, protect, and sustain the future you've always wanted. John Hancock, the future is yours. Hey Chuck, I need access to data. Okay. It's in Germany. Okay. Oh Bill, do I need to worry about hackers? Bill? No. Click on that app. For the last week. Please leave a message for Bill. I wish I had a program or uh, some kind of software. You know? You know? I know. Bill. I think I just killed the printer. When your infrastructure is ready for anything, your people are ready for anything. I waited too long to try an old spice man. Done. The old spice man performs best, and he lasts longer than the other guy. Take the old spice challenge. I do. Here's to your hair covered meat powered man suit. And this is for that mighty man suit. Dial for men cleans without drying. So you can say, I feel good being a man. Dial for men. Maintenance for your man suit. Steve Bunin inside the Bristol studio. Snowy outside, warm inside. And Oklahoma, after some trouble early, they move on past Southeast Missouri State. It's the freshman, Jenna Plum. Five points per game erupts for 20. Sooners move on, and Iowa State wrapping up its victory over Washington. Alicia Gladden, the only senior on the Florida State Seminole squad, the 10th seed, taking on the 7th seed, Old Dominion, coming up on ESPN. For now, back to Starkville on the hump with Lou and HDTV. All right, thanks, Steve. Here it's all Mississippi State. And they lead by 26, 92-66. And they blew this game open. Last six, seven minutes. Stewart for three. Gordon, another assist. That's his tenth. <laughs> and now Coach Rick Stansberry calls a timeout. He wants the crowd on its feet for Jamon Gordon, Charles Rose, and Reginald Bell. What a job by the sophomore, Jamont Gordon. 20 points, 6 rebounds, 9 assists. What didn't he do? Brainsman for third. <laughs> Did he get you coffee? I saw you on my side asking him for a cup of coffee. Wow, I would love to play, play with him. <laughs> just sit up in the corner and let him distribute the basketball. You definitely wouldn't want to play against him. Oh, I wouldn't. Jamont Gordon and Slater, the senior, throws it up off the glass. And Slater has 13. We're talking about that matchup on Tuesday versus Florida State, a team now at full strength. One of the reasons, major reasons, they didn't make it to the NCAA tournament was because they were without their starting point guard, Tony Douglas. They were one in four during that stretch towards the end of the season. That Jamont Gordon, our Hooters player of the game. There are his numbers, 20 points, 7 of 12 from the floor, 6 rebounds, 10 assists. And that ties a career high, and if you're asking at home, boy, that was close to a triple-double. Don't worry, he already has one this year against Vanderbilt. <laughs> they saw it firsthand. So that's going to be a great matchup against Florida State, uh, a team that's beaten Florida this year, beaten Duke, and 
have another great player in the country that a lot of people don't know about, and that's Al Fort, a senior uh, for Florida State. 97-72 on Mississippi State. And there's Jamon Gordon, the only underclassman named to the All-SEC first team this year. Leads his team in points, rebounds, assists, minutes played. We saw it firsthand today. So this is doing it in the SEC. And this is one of the toughest conferences in college basketball, if not with the likes of Florida, LSU, Alabama. And to lead your team in three statistical categories is absolutely unbelievable. Bernardo. He was terrific in the first half. That's something that we shouldn't overlook. Bernardo was on the floor for Rhodes, who had picked up two quick fouls, and the freshman, Bernardo, had 11 rebounds and four points in that first half. Unbelievable. Uh, shot blocking ability, offensive rebounds, his energy, his effort allowed Mississippi State to not lose a beat in the first half when Rhodes got into foul trouble. So an outstanding game from the bench as well. Good hands ball played well. Very steward off the bench. Production from the start lineup and from the bench. Season comes to an end for Bradley. A solid season it was for Jim West and crew. 22 and 13, Bradley finishes up. So if Mississippi State's victory, no battle Florida State in the quarterfinal round on Tuesday, right back here at the hump. Top two seeds. Billy Begley on the floor, Brad watching the shoot. Oh, that goes for you. First year walk on, has played just 17 minutes all year, and the crowd loves it. 101 72, Mississippi State moves on to the quarterfinal round. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Hubert Davis and the rest of our ESPN crew, I'm Luke Canella, so long from Starkville, Mississippi. Now let's go back to our studios in Steve Beauty. What's up? This is Double J dropping your hardwood favorites into the NCAA Women's Championship Mix. The ACC headlines the marquee. Will the title track to Tobacco Road? Or head back to Tolliver and the Terps? How about this band at top of the charts? Candace Wiggins and company make a strong case for the West Coast. Everybody knows when these two legendary leaders go on tour. Are their bands set for another trip to the big stage? Bring all you got. Your pride. Your passion. Your skill. Because it's only four wins to the final four. 64 tore the bracket with one shared dream to make Cleveland rock. Just a few moments away, Takiya Sparks getting set for Texas A&M as they get set with a 4-13 matchup against Texas Arlington. That is the game some of you may see. Other views may also see Florida State and Old Dominion as we get set to continue our coverage of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championships. Welcome into our studios. Glad you are here with us. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Trey Wingo here with Doris Burke and Stacy Dales. Hope you were with us earlier. If not, we've had a couple of games already go final, including those uh, in a couple of other regions, including Washington and Iowa State. Lindsay Matters, a real spark plug for Iowa State. A deep three from the top of the key. She buries it. Iowa State has now won nine of their last ten games as they roll by Washington. 79 to 60. Uh, they move on to the second round. They will await the winner between Georgia and Belmont. Andy Landers and company, a three seed. Tasha Humphrey, everybody knows her. Andy Landers, a thousand wins, the most with ever 
without having an NCAA title. Iowa State awaits the winner of that game coming up. Meanwhile, Oklahoma, a three seed in that loaded Dayton bracket. Well, they struggled early, but Jenna Plumley, the freshman, was seven of ten from three-point land as she had a real great game from the outside. Courtney Paris struggled with her double-double, but she got it 13 and 11. 59th straight game with a double-double. Oklahoma moves on. They await the winner of Marquette. News partner of the Panagraph that, quote, I'm willing to go through that legal process and believe it will be shown that I am innocent of any wrongdoing. That case is being handled by a special prosecutor. Milton says she intends to continue working as the county clerk. For more about the charges, go to WEEK.com, click on the Panagraph link on the front page, or, of course, pick up your copy of the paper tomorrow morning. Peoria Election Commissioners named Tom Bride as the commission's new executive director this afternoon. Bride had been acting as interim director since December, while also serving as the County Election Commission's director. Bride will be paid $65,000 annually and will take over full-time after the April elections. Under new rules given preliminary approval today, Bride will not be able to run for office while working as executive director. The former director, Jeanette Mitzelfeld, was running for county clerk while simultaneously serving as executive director. And we're in catching more heat today in Springfield. The Illinois Commerce Commission demanding to know why Ameren's threatening layoffs and service cuts while electric rates remain the same. Meanwhile, the state Senate today amended a bill and passed it out of committee. That bill would freeze rates for a year and reimburse customers for this year's rate increases. The bill now heads to the Senate floor. Now, the House has already passed a slightly different version of a rate freeze. Still, some local towns and businesses say they simply can't wait for a solution from Springfield. The city of Washington signed a year contract to buy its power from Wisconsin Power Supply. It's expected to save the city about $50,000 over what it would pay to Ameren. After we, uh, after we get done with uh, even this, I mean, we're still going to say substan see substantially increased energy co costs. Uh, to be real honest about it, uh, we're going to have to look at the impact of, of that, that cost increase uh, on such things as water and sewer rates. Meanwhile, in Deer Creek, it's a little darker at night. The village pulled the plug on 19 of its 51 streetlights to hopefully save $200 a month on its $628 electric bill. Ameren had said uh, being uh, dropped to junk bond status would force layoffs, but the utility company has not responded today to the Commerce Commission's demand for a full explanation. The ICC wants Ameren's response by Friday. The public got the opportunity to meet Unit 5's new leader in the Twin Cities tonight. Dr. Gary Niehaus takes over July 1st, but tonight he met with parents and other residents at a reception before being officially welcomed at the school board meeting. School Board President Scott Lay says interviews, positive references, and a visit by board members to Niehaus's current Charleston school all led to his hiring. Niehaus says he'll use his strengths to lead the district's growth and other top priorities. I think we all districts are worried about our finances. I mean, we're not sure exactly what the governor's uh, budget is going to do for us, and we want to make sure that we're well planned along those lines, too. We've got varying different numbers uh, with regard to what are the new foundation levels are going to be, but there's significant money coming if, if all this comes true. The House replaces Dr. Alan Chapman, who is retiring. District 150 officials say despite not meeting federal performance standards, they are making progress in student achievement. The Illinois State Board of Education recently released the report cards for school districts, and District 150 shows high school performance down, while primary and middle schools are up. District 150 Research Ch Director Brian Chumbley says schools throughout the district are targeting students who might not be making progress on yearly test scores. Those standards are measured in adequate yearly progress reports. According to the state report card, students at 11 primary and middle schools are not making the grade. Chumbley says while those students did not meet testing guidelines, they did show improvement in math and reading from last year. We have made tremendous gains in both reading and mathematics in those schools. Now, there may not, those gains may not be enough to get them off this list of not making adequate yearly progress, but the gains are very positive, and we believe that that kind of growth will continue. Franklin Edison Primary School is one of those schools seeing gains. Many schools there come from low-income families, but teachers use monthly benchmarks for student assessment, which has led to improved ISAT scores since 2000. 
Farmington Central District 265 has met adequate yearly progress in all categories. That's the first time in three years all the subgroups met the scoring threshold. About 80% of all District 265 students meet or exceed state standards. Superintendent Mark Doan says although he doesn't believe one test can determine the quality of teaching or learning, he is pleased that the school now meets state standards. More to come tonight for Edelstein and your hometown. Still ahead this afternoon's rainy weather temporarily shuts down the Peoria County Road. And are you tired of dragging yourself to the gym? Maybe this will give you some inspiration. Well, we certainly had a taste of spring out there today, didn't we? A little bit of thunderstorm activity rolled across the area late this afternoon. Now we have a few scattered showers hanging around. And yes, it's good to get a bit chilly again. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes after you look at Skywatch there, which is a little wet downtown tonight. You're watching your home team at 10. Tom McIntyre, Mike Demick, Lee Ranson's Weather First Forecast and Sports with Lee Hall. This is News 25 Nightside. My phone cut out after you said take that last right. Now, which way do we... Hello? 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 Nothing. Again? Most wireless companies will say they have the best network, but U.S. Cellular lets you try it for 30 days so you'll know it's best for you. U.S. Cellular is wireless where you matter most. U.S. Cellular. We connect with you. My truck better be able to haul. Haul ATVs. Haul feed, generators, whatever I throw at it. Downhill. In the mud. No matter what. We asked the guys who use trucks to help build ours and got an available 381 horsepower V8 workhorse that hauls up to 2,065 pounds and has an 8-foot bed with the largest cubic feet of space in its class. The all-new 2007 Toyota Tundra, built in Indiana and Texas. Now with 3.9% APR financing. The truck that's changing it all. At your Toyota. News 25, everywhere you are with News Notifier, delivered by email or mobile text casting. Sign up at WEEK.com. Brought to you by DiscoverPeoria.com. It's the St. Patrick's Day three-day, three-year, 0% event at Sherman's. That's no interest until 2010. Buy any sofa, mattress, or furniture and get three full years to pay. Buy select plasma and LCD HD TVs and get three full years to pay. Buy any audio or home theater system and get three full years to pay by any GE Profile appliance and get three full years to pay. This Saturday, Sunday, and Monday only during Sherman St. Patrick's Day, three-day, three-year, zero percent event. Maybe you haven't heard about the Saturn Aura's five-star front and side crash test rating or its European-inspired ride and handling or its refined interior that 49 automotive journalists have. 2007 Saturn Aura, the North American Car of the Year. Now get a new 2007 Saturn Aura named North American Car of the Year with 2.9% APR financing or a $500 allowance. This homeowner had a traditional realtor sell his house, while this homeowner used FSBOLocal.com. The realtor got results, so did FSBOLocal.com. The realtor also got a big commission, while FSBOLocal.com got one low advertising fee. Same outcome, very different costs. Is it starting to click with you now? FSBOLocal.com, where everything clicks into place. This portion of News 25 is brought to you by U.S. Cellular. U.S. Cellular. We connect with you. This Pennsylvania senior citizen might give you some motivation to hit the gym. Andorra Quinby holds the world weightlifting record for her age group. That'd be at 88. Quinby holds the world record for deadlifting 100 pounds. She's the oldest female competing in the International All-Around Weightlifting Association. As she points out, she doesn't have a lot of competition. Quinby started lifting when she was 78. Now, a decade later, she says lifting helps her feel and look younger. She's not the only senior contestant, though. Sunday, an 82-year-old woman also competed against her, beating Quinby at the bench press. 
the two-year-old undoubtedly thought, hey, I'll have no problem getting publicity here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knew? <laughs> that's that's an amazing story. How someone can just keep as active as that is, is great, isn't it? Yep. Good we lesson there. We should all do that. Yeah, well, I thought you saw the picture last night. That's right, I did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're already on our way. Right? <laughs> we are. <laughs> Look at that beautiful shot. That's not a peach, folks. That's the moon on a peach tree that Sue Mishler has in Metamora. Very nice shot there. Thank you very much for sending that along. And if you have a, a neat looking weather oriented photo, send them along to us here at WEK.com. It's 45 degrees right now, 42 in the Twin Cities. Those are low for the day. 16 mile an hour wind in Peoria, 26 mile an hour wind still whipping around the Twin Cities and there's still some showers hanging around out there. Officially only 17 hundredths of an inch in Peoria, but folks over around Lexington had penny sized hail and about 50 mile and our winds roll through the area this afternoon in McLean County and parts of Lexington, uh, Livingston County had some pretty good winds in that area. But it made it up to 74 before that rain hit. 45 our low so far. 76 the record high, so we didn't have a record today. 1995 still stands. And 6 the record low in 1993. Temperatures are really cooling down rapidly. 35 in Chicago, 38 in Des Moines. We're in the 40s, but it is still 63 in St. Louis, 62 in Indianapolis. That cold front is pushing through that area also, but it'll take it a little while for it to drop there. You can see the area of showers and thunder showers all over the upper Midwest. And yes, even some snow showers and freezing drizzle over the Wisconsin border here tonight. We're not going to get that cold. But it will up there. As you can see, there's a little light snow right now in the Madison area. We just have some scattered showers around here. They should end in the next few hours. Most of the activity has already moved on to the east. Still a pretty good cell here around Galesburg with some heavier rain. And one little cell just moved over the downtown Peoria area just about an hour and a half ago. 35 for an overnight low. It's going to be chilly. Only 42 for an afternoon high tomorrow. But once that low pressure center and rain get out of here in the morning, the cooler air is going to roll in. We have a high pressure center rolling in for the weekend. It's going to be cool, but it's going to be sunny. Here's what it looks like overnight, mostly cloudy. Scattered showers, still northeast winds at 15, gusting to about 30. And then during the day tomorrow, around 42, mostly cloudy. Don't go out without a coat on tomorrow. You're going to need that jacket with that northeast breeze blowing in at you. Only 42 for a high. 45 on Friday and Saturday, 48 on Sunday. Warming back up into the 50s, maybe even low 60s by the middle of next week. So once we get rid of this rain, at least we'll have a sunny weekend. All right. Don't know if it was because of the weather, but there was a rock slide this afternoon on Kickapoo Creek Road between Airport Road and Bartonville in Peoria. A woman's car was hit with debris and branches as she drove northbound on Kickapoo Creek Road. She wasn't injured, but her car was towed with minor damage. The road had to be closed for about an hour. It reopened just before five. It's been nearly two weeks since a devastating tornado blew through Enterprise, Alabama. People there are now trying to get their lives back into normal. Today, a big step for the kids in that town. They went back to school the first day of school since the tornado struck the town and heavily damaged the high school. Eight students were killed there. A lot of it looking forward to reunions with friends, getting back to some kind of routine. High school students will be taking their classes at a local community college. They will have to pick up some of their spring break class time to make up for the weeks that were missed. Still ahead on Nightside, the man believed to be the mastermind behind the 9-11 attacks confesses. But first, a jury suggests a Florida man be executed for killing nine-year-old Jessica Lunsford. Lee's Weather Photo brought to you by Allegiant Air. Now serving Tapas St. Petersburg nonstop from Peoria. Book now at AllegiantAir.com. Wherever you go in this world, you can always look good by following one simple direction. Come to the right place. Good news. What's that? Maybe you want a fuel-efficient SUV. Or one that helps protect its cargo. Or maybe you want one that always makes room for more. There's a way to have all three. The 2007 Saturn View. Qualified buyers get a new 2007 Saturn View front-wheel drive 4 with a $1,500 allowance covered by the GM 100,000-mile warranty. Now Steak and Shake lets you add real fruit, candy, or cookie bits to any milkshake. Control freaks, start freaking. Steak and Shake. 
After Car and Driver readers put the Camry, Accord, and all-wheel drive Ford Fusion to the test, Road and Track invited 400 car enthusiasts to do the same in California. So, what happened? Once again, Ford Fusion beat out both Camry and Accord on performance, handling, and styling. Take the Ford Challenge and see why Fusion is the better choice. Now just sign and drive off with zero down, zero first month's payment, and zero due at signing. Lease a Ford Fusion for only $249 a month. Visit a Ford dealer or go to FordChallenge.com. It's the St. Patrick's Day three-day, three-year, 0% event at Sherman's. That's no interest until 2010. Buy any sofa, mattress, or furniture and get three full years to pay. Buy select plasma and LCD HD TVs and get three full years to pay. Buy any audio or home theater system and get three full years to pay. Buy any GE profile appliance and get three full years to pay. This Saturday, Sunday, and Monday only during Sherman's St. Patrick's Day three-day, three-year, 0% event. And we're on. Welcome to LMV Drive Time, sponsored by Veldy Lincoln Mercury Volvo. A better way to buy, a better way to drive. It's a better way to drive. Uh, this new Lincoln M... That's the new Lincoln MKX. It's Lincoln's exciting new crossover with available all-wheel drive and panoramic vista roof. The MKX starts at under 35000 And the latest Lincoln Navigator at a little over forty five. At Veldy Lincoln Mercury Volvo. Veldy LMV, a better way to buy, a better way to drive. That's better. Thanks. Bergner's Goodwill Sale. For each apparel item you bring in for donation to Goodwill Industries, you get a 20% off coupon that's good on things that rarely, if ever, go on sale. How good is that? Come to the right place. Bergner's. Tonight, Jay's all new with Mini Driver plus Truth and Labeling means you have to call it this. It's just gas money. Then on Conan, Andy Barker, P.I.'s Andy Richter. Tonight... The man believed to be the mastermind of 9-11 has reportedly taken responsibility for the attacks from start to finish. That's according to court documents from a military hearing.